If Carrie St. Louis can do a no bubble Glinda entrance, you can file your taxes on time. Oh my God, did you hear? Did you hear? Did you hear? Oh my God, guys. Did you hear? Oh my God, guys. Did you hear? Oh my God, guys. 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 What is up, everybody? My name is Jake Workman, and this is Oh My Pod, you guys, a musical theater and pop culture podcast. You guys, my little gay heart was beating pitter-patter this week because we got the official teaser trailer for Greta Gerwig's Barbie. And let me tell you, this movie is stacked. The cast is ridiculous. I am so excited for this movie. When I first heard that it was being created, I was like, I don't really understand where we're going with this. I didn't really understand like the tone or like what angle Greta Gerwig was gonna take with this, but it looks so campy. It looks so tongue in cheek and so self-aware. The costumes look beautiful. The, the scenic design looks just stunning. It looks hilarious. Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling obviously look the part as Barbie and Ken, but there are so many fun cameos that are gonna happen throughout the movie. I, I cannot wait to be surprised. I mean, I think my favorite is Kate McKinnon as like the busted Barbie who's always in the splits because you know that Barbie. You had that Barbie, you threw that Barbie down the stairs and Kate McKinnon is the perfect person to portray that Barbie. So I think it's gonna be absolutely hilarious. I can't wait. There's also a shot in the trailer where Margot Robbie steps out of her high heels and onto the balls of her feet because she has Barbie feet, so they wouldn't go like flat to the ground. It's it's just genius already. I, I cannot wait to see this movie. Y'all, let's dive right into this week's Broadway World recap. First up, we have to talk about the newest season of Schmigadoon, now entitled Schmicago, that has just dropped on Apple TV. This show stars Keegan-Michael Key, Cecily Strong, Jane Krakowski, Ariana DeBose, Dove Cameron, like so many, I mean, Kristen Chenoweth, Alan Cumming, all these people are like Broadway icons and the show is just so good. The first two episodes are out now um, on Apple TV Plus and you guys run to watch this show. I loved the first season of Schmigadoon, but this season, I mean, it's kind of my bread and butter. I live for those like 70s and 80s, dark candor and ebb style musicals. And I mean, these parodies are already just unbelievable. They're so funny and and so brilliant. So I cannot recommend this show enough. Next, we have a little bit of off-Broadway news. It was just announced that Joy Woods is going to take over the role of Audrey in Little Shop of Horrors off-Broadway full-time, which is so thrilling. I got to see her in, in the show as one of the urchins, but she has been bumped up to Miss Audrey, and I cannot wait to see her do this role. She's playing opposite Tony winner Matt Doyle, and the show, you guys, it's just beautiful. It's so funny, and and the puppetry is incredible. I've talked about it on the pod before, but um, I'm so excited for Joy. I think she's going to be excellent in this role. She's also randomly the face of Chicago Broadway. Like, she's in all of the promos for Chicago, but she's never (laughs) been in the show, which I think is hilarious. So it's about damn time that she's the lead. Next, we have to talk about these incredible promo photos for Camelot on Broadway that were just released by Broadway World. Um, The photos were taken by Joan Marcus and they come just before the opening of Camelot at Lincoln Center. This show looks absolutely stunning. It looks huge. The stage is broad and wide and beautiful and um, it really lends itself to a production of this scale. Philippa Sue looks absolutely stunning as Guinevere, and um, I cannot wait to see the show and hear this score sung. And I think I may have mentioned it on the pod before, but special shout out to my friend Delphi Boric, who is in the ensemble of the show and covering Guinevere. I hope to get to see you in the show. And speaking of incredible production photos, we got a Broadway World exclusive first look at the promo photos for the opening of Shucked the Musical on Broadway. And you guys, this show looks amazing. We got a first look at Alex Newell singing their song Independently Owned from this new musical. And it is ridiculous. I mean, Alex Newell, obviously, icon. But 
the show looks brilliant. I think it's going to be hilarious and heartfelt and entertaining. And I have a friend in the show, Jimmy Brewer, who is making his Broadway debut. So I can't wait to see the show. But these promo photos look beautiful. The lighting plot looks absolutely exquisite. And I can't wait to see the show. I think it's going to be the sort of like dark horse that nobody really anticipated being the biggest hit. But I think it's going to be great. And lastly, you guys, it was just announced that Harvey Guillen and Michael Yuri have joined the cast of Spamalot at the Kennedy Center. And oh my pod, I am dying to see the show. I love the show. I think it's absolutely brilliant and hilarious. But the fact that these two have joined the cast is insane. I mean, I am obsessed with Harvey Guillen. I love the show, the TV show, What We Do in the Shadows. And he plays just this hilarious and adorable role. If you haven't seen the show, you gotta check it out. It's so funny. And Michael Yuri, I mean, Broadway vet. I, my favorite role he's done was in Douglas Lyons' play Chicken and Biscuits. But I think he's a gem and I think that they are going to add to the show so brilliantly. So I guess I have to haul my cookies on down to Washington, D.C. to check out Spamalot at the Kennedy Center. And you guys, this has been the Broadway World Recap. Oh my pod, you guys. I am so excited to welcome my next guest. She is a Broadway diva and she is currently starring as Rose in the off-Broadway production of Titanic. Please welcome Miss Carrie St. Louis. Ah, oh, the crowd goes wild. No, I'm kidding. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, okay, welcome. thanks guys. <laughs> Oh my God, I'm so excited to be here. I'm so good. How are you? I'm so good. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from New York City, baby. New York City, baby. Calling, calling from? Yeah. Yeah. New York City. <laughs> are, you, are you in New York right now? Uh, yes, I'm in New York, but I never oh, know. Oh, I never no. know where my people are. They're, <laughs> they're like, That's oh, true. I'm, I'm in my uncle's basement in Saskatchewan. I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> Where you, that's very radio of you to be like, where are you calling in from? Where are you, ca- listeners? Where are you? <laughs> yeah. um, where is home for you originally before before New York? So before New York, I actually grew up in Palm Desert, California, so Palm <gasps> Springs area. Oh, which yeah. Which every time I say that, someone is like, oh, my grandparents live out there. But yeah, I grew up in Palm Desert, California, and I love, it. I love it out there. Oh my yeah. God. I like randomly spent like a three day like jaunt there because when I was on tour with Chicago, we got, that was like, we were, we were like marooned before the, <laughs> the shutdown. Oh, I mean, so not we a bad place to be marooned. No, no, absolutely. It's fabulous. <laughs> Oh my God. And now, so, so when did you move to New York then? So, I mean, I kind of had, a, I've kind of been all over, but, um, I actually went away to a boarding prep school for high school. So I moved to the East coast right outside of Boston. Um, when I was about 15 years old and it wasn't because I was a troublemaker. Sometimes people are like, Oh, I I guess East coast gets prep school more West coast. If you say, Oh, my child goes to boarding school. They're like, what did she do? Like that was the vibe. Yeah. Yeah. And my parents are like, she is not a troublemaker. Do not worry. It's Carrie we're talking about. Um, but yeah, so I went to prep school and then I came back to LA for college. I went to USC uh, and I was an opera major, LOL. <gasps> what a wild, what a wild time. And then, uh, yeah, I moved to New York probably, when was it? 2013? Oh, wow. 2013, okay. 2013, 2014. Yeah. Yes. To Ten do years. Rock of Ages. Hell Ten years. Yes. I know. Gosh, it goes by so fast. Oh, my it's God. crazy. Wait, so did you yeah. do, okay, so diving right in. If For the Let's... listeners who have been living under a rock, <laughs> Carrie <laughs> has kind of done fucking everything, but um, we must talk about your star turn as Miss Sherry Christian in Rock of Ages. Oh my. <laughs> my star turn. Yes. Oh my did you um, did you join the Broadway company first, or did you do the Vegas company before that? I opened the Vegas company, so I was the the OG Sherry in Las Vegas, which Work. was so wild. I was 21 years old uh, and living in Las Vegas, per- being a Broadway stripper. We coined it Broadway stripper because it was like, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it was a wild, wild ride. And then after about a year and a half of that in Vegas, um, they took me to the Broadway company. Wow! So, so it had already been I moved running to in New York. York. 
Yes, yes. I, I was in it near the end. Um, they brought Constantine Maroulis back, so mm-hmm. I did it with him uh, for a few months, and then I got Wicked. So I was really in the Broadway company for only about, like, six months before wow. I left. And, I so, mean, talk yeah. about a fucking, like, tone shift going from <laughs> Broadway oh stripper God. to bubble entrance yes. extraordinary. Oh, my God. The, the day I found out I got Glinda, I called my mom sobbing and was like, I get to wear a princess dress. <laughs> I don't have to strip anymore. It was like Pretty Woman. The Pretty Woman career yes. shift, yeah. But oh also, I mean, God. going from... Going from opera into Rock of Ages was also a lot. Like, it was just, it's, I've just kind of, yeah, I just like to jump all over the place, I guess. So, did Keeps you? Keeps it interesting. I'm sure. Was your training at USC, um, did it lend itself to any sort of, like, physical, like, dance or anything like that? Or were you, was that kind of, like, <laughs> part of who you were? I mean, you can't really dive into Rock of yeah. Ages without having, like bodily awareness <laughs> yeah yes true um yeah I would always I always say I'm like a dancer fifth um dance <laughs> I was there was not a lot of dance in uh at USC but strangely enough like my first ever audition like my audition for Rock of Ages itself was just like lightning in a bottle it's one of those things where I can't believe I look back now and I go the, the young Carrie who had nothing to lose You know, I just came into that audition room and was just sort of like, this is what I got, you know, and went into the dance call and I remember it so vividly. It's kind of like, I I talk about it all the time. Probably some of your listeners have heard this story and I'm sorry to repeat it again, but I um, (laughs) went to the dance call. Everyone was in, you know, heeled boots, cut off shorts, you know, bra tops. I was in a black dress and character heels and I brought knee pads because the email advised us to do so. Um, no one was wearing knee pads except for me. Uh, and we started the dance and it was to like, pour some sugar on me, that song, you know, and it started with like, you know, double pirouette, whipping your head around. And I just like went for it. I, I can do, I can dance. Like, I think I sell myself short on it, but I wouldn't say I'm like, the most comfortable dancing. Sure. Um, and it got to a point in the dance where I, there was a leap of some sort. I just still don't know what it was, but I kind of gave up and Kelly Devine, the choreographer called me up in front of everybody else. She said, Carrie St. Louis, come, come here. And she whispered in my ear and she was like, I don't give a leap. If you can't do that leap, do something and make it work. And was like starting from the top. And I turned around and was like, oh, cool. Now I'm choreographing something. Cool, cool, cool. (laughs) We love. Uh, And got to that part in the dance. And everyone did the leap. And I just walked in a circle like it was the coolest (laughs) dance move. Like just selling face. Like selling personality. Strut, strut, strut. And we finished. And I looked at her. And she was like, like crying with laughter. Like it was truly like, she was just like, Oh my God. And then like, I don't know. And weirdly, another girl in the audition came up to me at that audition. I'll never forget this. And she tapped me on the shoulder and she just said, you're going to be an amazing Sherry and walked out like, like some like psychic. Oh my nonsense. God. I was literally like, a witch. and I turned around and I went, what? And I feel like she was gone. Like in my memory, it's like, <laughs> and then she was gone. It was just like this tap on the shoulder And when I got it, you know, Kelly was like laughing with me, still laugh about it because she was like, you just were Sherry Christian. Like that is exactly what the character would do Uh in that moment. And I had no idea. I just was like, here's what I got to offer. So, wow, yeah, yeah, that was, that's my dance story. I I love (laughs) it. Well then, so I learned a lot. I learned a lot from doing it. We took a pole dancing class when we got to Vegas and that is hard. Oh, oh my gosh. Girl. The core strength out of control. (laughs) I have so much respect. I was like, because my character just had to be suspended from one, like a pole at one point in the show. Yeah. So I just, I know how to climb a pole very quickly, but I cannot get down. I just slide. But girl, you're also freaking melting your face off. So that (laughs) you have other things to worry about. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, Um, Just selling personality. Always, always. Um, (laughs) So tell me about then your jump from Rock of Ages to, to Wicked. Um, ROA was your Broadway debut? Uh, yes. Rock of Ages was my Broadway debut. Okay. And then I was, yeah, I was about six months in and I had gone in for Wicked in college one time and, um, was told that I was more of a Nessa Rose. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> Work. 
And I think it's because I hadn't seen it since I was 15. And then when I went in, we do the, you do the popular scene at one point. And I was like, that may be your secret alpha bubba. That doesn't make... I mean, I was so heartfelt, like sure. gut-wrenchingly heartfelt. And they were like, she's too emotional to be Glinda. Like, that is just not... So I took a step back because I was like, she's a Glinda. She's a Glinda. Let's... <laughs> We're all aware of that now. Don't get it twisted. Um, don't get it twisted. So uh, <laughs> I actually like went and saw it again and then was in, you know, in the audition process. And luckily, do you know Christy Candler? Yes. Do you know her? Mm-hmm. She I know, was not personally, our dance, but I know of her. Yeah. She was our dance captain at Rock of Ages and she was the original witch's mother mm-hmm. in um, Wicked. And so all throughout the audition process, she really like coached me on this stuff and was kind of telling, you know, giving me the, like, this is what is happening here and just really like helping me put myself in the mind frame of it. Um, and yeah, then did all the auditions and got it. And I was, I was rehearsing for Wicked during the day from nine to five, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And then I was going and doing Rock of Ages on Broadway at night, which was wild. My brain was all over the place. Um, vocal, that's when vocal stamina comes into, Real high gear, and you're yes. like so thankful for it. Well, um, and even just like then, your opera training, I'm sure, was just like, okay, yeah. this is muscle memory. You gotta just fucking yep. You just you go, you do your thing. You, yeah, you know your placements. So you just stick to <laughs> stick to it. Um, and then I yeah, and then I had my last show on Broadway, and the next day flew out and joined the tour. So it was pretty back to back. It was yeah, and and between Rock of Ages Vegas and Rock of Ages Broadway, I had four days of rehearsal. So I. Kind of didn't stop doing eight shows oh a week. And then between God. between Wicked on tour and Wicked on Broadway, I got about four weeks, four or five weeks, which was like my first break in three years. Three years. Oh, my Crazy. God. So, yeah. so then yeah. how, how was um, being on the road as Glinda? I mean, it's one thing to, to do a show where you are the leading lady, like Rock of Ages, you know, and you're in like a sit yeah. down place where you have like your resident, you know, your home and your things and whatever. But like, yeah. I, I, you know, being, being one of the two most iconic roles basically in like the musical theater <laughs> female canon yeah. on the road, like not having your own home base. What is that like? You know, I learned so much I learned so much. It's really like trial by fire. Mm-hmm. You just, no one is prepared for that. You just <laughs> do it and you just figure it out on the way, you know? Um, I I feel lucky that I was so young. <laughs> I look back now and I'm like, I do not know. I don't know if I would be able to do it now. Um, I was so young, but also I had always wanted to go on a tour. That was something that I just knew that I wanted. And the Wicked Tour is just so incredible. I mean, it's like one of the only production contracts still left. So um, we got to sit down in places for four to six weeks, which felt really wonderful because you don't, it's not just picking up and going all the time. You kind of do feel like you live there a little bit. Right. Um, And one summer I did, we did a, But the summer I was on tour, we did a Pacific Northwest summer. So we did four weeks in Seattle, three weeks in Portland, five weeks in Denver, Colorado. It was incredible. It was like dreams, 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 dreams. Um, And I loved my company out there. I brought my dog. Uh, So it was kind of, I had a little bit of home out there with me. Um, I will say like you learn really quickly that you just constantly, the second you get used to a certain climate, certain allergies, certain everything, you're then switching and all your body shifts, like every, your whole body chemistry shifts too. So learning how to sing Glinda, traveling in all these different places, Mm -hmm. you know, like in Denver, they've got the oxygen masks backstage, you know, in Arizona, it's so dry, you're in a desert, like Mm -hmm. everything was just constantly in flux. So um, I really learned how to take care of myself how to pace myself. Uh, and the, the really the, my main takeaway from tour that I think is, I'm realizing now as I've gotten older, it, inc- it helped me incredibly. It was like a masterclass on comedy and timing mm. because every city you go to has a different sensibility, a different, they think different things are funny. They, they, it's just different. Right. Mm-hmm. So we would get show up at a new city and my Glinda would change my like 
comedic timing or how I would say certain lines or how they would land would change depending on the audience reaction. In some cities, they were, you know, it's a very liberal place. They, some of those lines were, they would go wild and other places a little more conservative. Like, it's just so interesting. And it really taught me so much about listening and it's, it's all involved. Like comedic timing, you work with the audience. And Glinda, that is so much what is difficult about Glinda as a character mm -hmm. is just riding that line of being likable and also kind of coming in as sort of the antagonist at the beginning, but yes. you have to be likable. So it's, it's a very fine line and it was really fun to figure that out everywhere I went. That's so um, cool. And who was yeah. your, who was your first yeah. green girl? My first green girl was Laurel Harris. Oh I yes. Love Laurel Harris. She's the best. Um, and her final city was, Durham, North Carolina, where she's from. So we were like celebrities. <laughs> it was so, it was a rock concert every night. It was so cool. It was so cool to watch her do that in her hometown too. It is the most special thing ever to be Alphaba in your hometown. Like, oh, come on. I, I mean, that imagine. is, yeah, yeah. Um, I love her dearly. And then my, uh, my, basically my main full-time tour Alphaba was Alyssa Fox, who's currently, Broadway's 20th anniversary. And let me tell yeah. you, Miss Fox turns the party and she sang. out. Mm -hmm. Oh, she can sing. Mm -hmm. But Carrie, I have to tell you, I saw you do Glinda. And you did? Of course I did. So the oh fact my that God. I get Wait, to I didn't have know you, that. <laughs> the fact that I get to have you on this pod is like kind of still blowing my mind. Like I'm a little bit like, Oh my God. Really, but, um, you know, I'm like that. I'm that gay. Who's just like, I, I am obsessed with wicked. I always will be. I know it's like the most Same. cliche thing ever, but like, it's just, it's iconic. It's I've seen so the show, good. Like, it's just so good. I've That's seen it, I think thing. 16 times now, like just, yeah. just dumb. And like every time, I see it, I notice something new, and I just, like, fall in love with it again. But It's so um, good, and it's so fun to watch everybody make the roles their own. Like, there is so much of that where, and it and it always works. It always hits mm -hmm. because it is just such a good show, and the message and the story and the, it just, everything was just done right. Yes. But it's also really fun because it's constantly morphing and changing with, all the different casting and I love seeing how they're casting it now too. They're, they've been so much more inclusive in general and it's just, yeah, I just, I, I'm a wicked fan girl too. And Gloria. I don't think that'll ever go away. <laughs> Do you, can you tell me about like your, your rehearsals and like your first time even just like going oh, up in the bubble? Like what is it like yeah. to step into those iconic costumes? I mean, it's so many, so many feelings. I, when I went to the, cause while they're making your costumes, you know, you're out on the road and they have a warehouse that's like, you know, 20 years of costumes. So there's, there's, you definitely fit into somebody's something. Yeah. Um, and when I went to the warehouse for my like first costume fitting while they were making my costumes, they were trying on bubble dresses for me and I put one on and Alice, who's the, um, like head of wardrobe who is iconic. She's like won a Tony award for wardrobe, which is unheard I think she might be the only person that's ever won that Amazing. she's I mean she's legendary by herself like you walk in and it's just all the things that you expect a Broadway costume fitting to be and I'm like in this iconic warehouse and she puts me in the bubble dress and there's no mirrors anywhere and she goes do you want to go look in the mirror and I was like oh like can I you know like I'm just like oh my god and so we go and I look in the mirror and the second I saw myself in the bubble dress like burst into tears like oh. full sobbing tears and she goes and she just pats me on the back she goes happens to every single Glinda and I was like what it's just so special it's truly beyond my wildest dreams and I still have moments where I look back and go like that ha did that really just happen uh, actually um and then also a really cool moment for me was Megan Hilty was my first Glinda that I saw at the Pantages in LA mm -hmm. and my family drove me into LA to see the show and and um while they were getting my custom Leducas made oh. <laughs> I hate, hate myself even saying that but it's so so <laughs> the, the Leducas are fabulous oh yeah um while they were making those I again they sent out shoes that were my size from the wardrobe and I opened up my shoes and they said Hilti popular on them. And so I was quite literally 
walking in Megan Hilty's popular shoes when I started the tour. Wow. Which, again, was a very full circle thing. Uh, for me. And th- those moments happen chills. more often chills. than not. Yeah, yeah. More <laughs> often than not. There's a lot of special little things that, you know, just signing the bubble when you leave. Or there's, like, every Glinda. I don't know if you have heard this before, but every Glinda since Kristen the bubble on Broadway goes, you know, up. At, you start the show up in the rafters, right? And um, Gl- and Kristen started this where she left for who? Who replaced her? Was it Megan? No, no. it was. Um, oh, forgive me. Oh, um, oh my God, no! I saw her ah. in Dear Evan Hansen. <laughs> yeah, Dear Evan Hansen. Oh my God, Jennifer Jennifer Laura Thompson. Yes, 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 yes. Right? Yeah, Jennifer. Yes. Um, icon, icons only. Mm-hmm. Um, she. <laughs> left a little quote up there like on a piece of paper so that every time when you like you're up there you see the quote before you descend in the bubble and so now every glinda from then on leaves a quote picks a quote and leaves it there for the next glinda to see wow. when they're before they come down and the head carpenter has every single one of those from the beginning so oh, my that's kind of cool that's so yeah. cool i mean being in a, a yeah. legacy show like that is just how special to get I mean because like you said you see so many new people um going into the show and you know like the the new cast announcement like every year or so of like oh my gosh like this person gets the chance to do it but that is so so cool so it's it's like a sisterhood that you you only know if you know you know if you know like it's like if you've been through it it's just like a bond instant bonding like we know you know it's just a very it's a tribe so then when you, cool. when you were done with Wicked, were you ready? Were you like, okay, I, yeah, I'm yeah. ready. And I remember, I remember like nine months in, because I went from tour to Broadway. So it ended up being about two years total. Mm-hmm. And I remember about nine, they keep the contracts about nine months to a year, usually for the two girls. And I think people are always like, why would you want to leave this? Like why, you know, or why would they do that? And I'm like, I think it's, it's just a lot. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of pressure. It's a, it's your whole entire life is yeah. that mm-hmm. like, it is so hard to really do anything outside of it because you're just doing the show like you're just making it you're an athlete and you're running a race every day and that's what you do um and people had said you start to get burnt out around nine months and I remember at nine months feeling like I could do this forever like I was just so Mm. not ready and I got it a whole nother year but by the end of that second year I was like oh I'm my body is just tired my you know and you want to also you want them to have the fresh there's so much that's great about the turnover and the, you know, and the energy of it all. So yeah, yeah, that's, I was ready, but it was, it was a a wonderful, wonderful experience. And so then how long did you have between finishing wicked and joining kinky boots? I had a bit. So I left wicked and you know, everyone's like, well, what's next? And you're like a nap, like the longest (laughs) nap of all time. Like (laughs) I literally can't even think about doing anything else right now. Mm -hmm. Um, and also keep in mind, this is uh, like, this is, this, uh, this is from Rock of Ages Vegas till then. Right. Like it was Five a years. long go for me. Um, and so I was, it was kind of whiplashy. It was a little like, and I think there's also this pressure you're, you've like, it's the ultimate. Like it was truly like, I was like, I have achieved, like, this is my dream role. Yeah. Now it's happened now what Mm -hmm. and it's kind of a weird I think it's it's just a weird place to be in a little bit I I kind of struggled with it to be quite honest um because you you have all this like everyone's like wow you were Glinda what's next and you're like I've literally been in this machine this corporation right for so long that I it's not like also during that time I was like making connections or doing readings of new musicals like you're just doing that and so you get out and you're kind of like I don't even really know anybody besides Wicked uh-huh. Life, you know? So I, I had a little time of like, what am I, what am I going to do next? Where do, where do we go from here? Um, and then Cruel Intentions happened yes. actually first. <laughs> and that was like so different from, I mean, we were like in a bar in Soho, <laughs> you know, like doing this kind of concert thing and people just loved, I mean, I had so many friends come and be like, this is the best thing you've ever done. And I was like, this, this, <laughs> you're like, <laughs> I just left so, the grocery I mean, but thank you. 
Yeah, it was so, but it was so fun. And it was like such, and it's so funny now because of Titanic with Constantine, but like Constantine and I, we were like best friends. Like it was just, it actually felt really nice to have no pressure. It went from the highest amount of pressure to literally no pressure. Wow. Um, And, and then, yeah, and then Kinky Boots happened and Kinky Boots was truly just, I mean, it's so hard. People are like, what's your favorite role you've played? And I'm like, every single, I've been so lucky to be in such great shows. Totally. But Kinky Boots was so magical. Like it, the pe- everybody in that building is just the best kind of human. Mm. Like it just, everybody was just like, we're doing this because we love doing this. And we, you know, we love sharing this story. And it was so, it was such a joyous place to be really, truly. Love and it. Lauren is the best track of all time because you sing one song and then you just like dance with your friends <laughs> in the background. <laughs> and you get to be a fucking like, clown too. And you're, yeah, and you're like, I'm I'm the leading lady in this Broadway show, but like I'm just clowning around with my friends. Like there were moments where Jerry Mitchell would be like, and then you just stand here and you just like dance with your friends. And I'm like, oh, just like whatever I want to do. <laughs> yeah. Like, wow. Oh dreams. my God, that's amazing. So, I mean, I yeah, was so sad. Yeah. I, I remember seeing... Um, I think it was the Tony Awards performance for Kinky Boots. And I um, was like, why am I so young? I want to be one of those yeah, fucking I, Oh, queens. my God. I was like, I oh want to be God. an angel You so would have been incredible. <laughs> oh, you would have been incredible. <laughs> oh, thank you. But I hope to do it, um, like, regionally or something, because I, I love it. That's the thing. And... It's going to be everywhere. I know. It's 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 truly the best. I, I love that show. Well, I love that show. I must say, I did get to see you um, as Glinda, but... I have to be honest, when I saw Titanic, the musical, oh what, like a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, all thanks to the my just dear, wonderful friend, Luke, Luke Neville, who is the associate wonderful. choreographer. Yes, he's truly the best. Obsessed with um, him. But I cannot tell you, Carrie, you in this <laughs> show are off the rails in every <laughs> sense of the word. Like, like singing... Just, uh, duh, the house down boots. Like, just giving (laughs) vocals out the ass. But your Uh, comedy is so genius. How do you even go about, like, like taking on a role like this or, or, um, like, rehearsing (sighs) for a show like this that's, you know, been been running, and then it switched to this this new fabulous theater. Um, Yeah. So that, like, I'm sure it changed, oh like, god. the staging and everything. But, oh my god, tell me about being put into this <laughs> this crazy show. This unhinged, chaotic shit show. Yes. yes. So, I mean, it's, it's so fun. It's so fun. I mean, at the end of the day, I go to work and I'm like, it's not life or death. Like, we are here to bring joy. I break on stage constantly. <laughs> oh my god, last night, when was, yeah, last night. I'm like, what day is it? This is my <laughs> musical theater brain. Of course. Um, Last night, I broke so many times that when our stage manager always comes up to the group afterwards to the girls' dressing room and is like, any notes, anything, anybody you need? And I was like, I'm okay if you fire me. Like, I understand. <laughs> I didn't just, it was, like, it was, that was rough. That was a rough go for me. Um, no, the show, so I have kind of been following the show because, again, Constantine's one of my best friends and, like, he's one of the writers. And it, I just, every time I've seen it, in concerts or anything, I'm like, this is brilliant. Mm-hmm. Like, it is beyond... And it just kept getting better and better and better. And during the pandemic, he and I um, lived around the corner from each other in West Hollywood. So we would go on walks, and he was like, it got pushed again, it got pushed again, you know, blah, 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 blah. Sure. And Alex, who originated Rose, is like, I love her to death. And I came and saw opening night, and I saw it for... I, it got to the point where Frankie Grande literally was like, oh, Carrie's back again. <laughs> and I was like, guys... <laughs> Okay, I get it. I'm a super fan. But it's just the kind of show that, like, if any friend was in town, I was like, this is what this is what you have to see. Absolutely. Like, you have to see this. And I have to see it. You see it. Because it's so ridiculous. And I want these jokes you're going to love. And, um, and so, and then it kind of, then Connie, like, reached out and was like, so, you know, like, Alex is going on vacation. We want you to come in and be, like, almost like an emergency cover just, like, to start learning the show like because I think you know I think that could be a good thing (laughs) hint hint nudge nudge you know and I was like okay you know I um and then yeah and then I found out that she was leaving and and they they let me they let me 
take it on and it's been really fun I mean they've given me so much liberty with it Mm -hmm. I play it very differently than Alex did which everyone has been so supportive of and it's kind of I think that's it's gonna kind of turn into like a Elphaba Glinda thing I think everybody that plays it is gonna bring their own sense of comedy to it which is so fun um yeah she's a trip and I and you know things it's like anything with comedy. You start you start a little bit of something and then it starts getting laughs and then it just and then one day you're like, "Oh, now I'm like fully doing a voice. Like I'm fully um Improvising this is unhinged, paragraphs but... of of lines that are not Yeah, in totally. Totally. Of course. But the thing that I love about Titanic is that it really feels like an ensemble show. Totally. Like it is it is we are passing the ball constantly. So and fast. this company these this group of actors like it is such a team sport and everyone is so i hate to curse but so fucking good oh yeah everyone is so good in this cast that it is like you are just everyone is setting up everyone else's jokes nobody's trying to steal it nobody's trying everyone's stealing the show in their own way but it's just it just feels collective oh yeah and it's really easy to like you know, be funny and be yourself and be loose on stage when you know that you trust everyone else on the stage to kind of pick up the ball and pass it, pass it on. Um, and I just love at the end, like not to give away spoilers, but we all like as a company turn towards the front. Yeah. (laughs) The boat sinks. Sorry. Spoiler. (laughs) Um, but at the very end we all come out and we all like sing this one thing and we all face outwards and like, it just feels to me so much like I get choked up about it like often in the show because it feels like old school theater troops. Mm. Like we don't change costumes. We're not like it's just all and there's so much that's like, ooh, a corset holding up nothing. Like there's so much imagination involved. Yes. And you don't miss it. You're not like, oh, I need this high tech set. You just you're there. You're in it. Mm-hmm. And it and then at the end we all come together and it's like, thanks for coming to our thing that we just brought you know like totally. we unpacked off our little car and did our little thing yes, I don't know the clown car that just is gonna hightail yeah. it out of town totally I mean, totally truly though I it, it is one of my favorite things I have ever seen it was so Ugh. fun it's so genius it's um it references so many things and if you get the reference you get it and even if you don't you're still gonna laugh because it's just like everybody's like delivering on like 110 percent but um tell me about being in the show with the two creators of the show constantine and marla co-created this show they're both unbelievable in the show i mean marla literally just is Celine Dion, but like yeah (laughs) how how has it been to sort of like go about taking a character, you know, that's been played by one person, it's now your turn, but also like getting the permission from the people who you're sharing the stage with to, to create and make it new. Yeah. It's, it's really interesting. It's, it's amazing. Honestly. I mean, uh, they're, they're both very open to it moving and being a, you know, they're, they're not like stand on two and then put your, you know, it's very, it's very collectively like kind of go with it and see what happens. And, I've gone to Marla a couple times and been like, or or Connie, I did the other day. And I was like, this line isn't really landing. Like, what would you do? Like, is there, is there something that I need to do? Or am I just being, am I just overthinking it? Because there's so many jokes in the show that like, of course, like every line can't be just like, (laughs) everything's so funny that it's almost like people have to like pick and choose because they're just coming off of a laugh or something else. But, um, uh, and it's not about that. Actually, my character is probably the most straight character in terms of like, kind of I I'm kind of the the punching bag of everybody's <laughs> jokes they just slap Rose around it's oh great. yeah which um, I mean and you respond so beautifully it's hilarious it's, it's yeah it's hilarious it's like the more earnest you are in it the funnier it is that like everyone just shits on Rose constantly yes um but yeah they've been they've been super open to like figuring things out and like one of my favorite things which Marlo will kill me for this but when we were at the Daryl Roth a lot of the stage because I opened the Daryl Roth theater Mm -hmm. so the staging is completely different obviously a whole new space which I think allows me to have a little bit of ownership over it too because a lot of the things are like where did I go when we were blocking that it was like okay then I'll just walk off this way and then I'm gonna put the scarf here and I'm gonna do you know there's just things that like I just like let me just figure out this track for myself Mm -hmm. um 
But the there's a moment where he used my mother used to say, Rose, now you strike that bench and think about what you've done uh-huh. or whatever, what you could have cost us. And in the asylum, there they had benches, so they would she would pick it up and walk off, and it was hilarious. Right. We got rid of the benches for this production, and so it was sort of like, well, what are we going to say instead? And then he said, you know, okay, you exit stage right sadly and think of what you could have cost us. And like, I, at first I was just like walking off sad and it just like wasn't really that funny. Uh And so one day, like to this day, and this is me being an idiot, to this day, I still use my hands for left and right. (laughs) Like... When I'm driving or when I'm walking, like, I'll be like, okay, I got to go left. Okay, L. L is left. Like, I still do that. That is how I I function. And so I went like this and, like, did it. And, like, one person laughed, like, in the tech, you know. And Marla was like, that is so stupid. No. And I was like, Marla, I you just got to let – I was like, trust me, if you know, you know. Like, if you are one of those people – that is so on brand for some people. It's niche, but like the show is full of niche jokes, of right? And now it's stuck. And like from our first audience on, it always gets a laugh. It always gets a laugh. And some nights it's like roaring and it's my favorite thing ever because I come off and I'm just like, I should get co-writing credit. Like I wrote Titanic. Like I don't, and she's like, shut up. Like, oh my God. So it's just funny. But like, that's my only claim to fame really. But um Honestly, being a part of it with them and watching them work too. I mean, if this is Constantine's brain on stage, knowing I know that as his friend. So I was like, of course I love it. Like, (laughs) it's amazing. But it's also just so, it's so inspiring. It really is so inspiring. Mm -hmm. We all got choked up on Saturday because we had a crazy crowd. And like, it's just wild to think that they just, you know a group of actors and friends were at a bar one night and we're like, this is funny to us. And now look at what it is. Like it's that, it's that thing that they always say, make your own work, make your own work. And they did. And they've been staying the course and it is just blown up to this degree of like, I'm just so proud of them both knowing them as colleagues, but also as I guess my bosses, like Mm -hmm. it's just exciting. And as things keep happening, I'm always telling that, you know, our director Ty, I'll just pull him aside and be like, I just, outside of it, outside of me being a part of it, I'm just so proud. I'm so fucking proud of you guys. Like, this is so cool. That is so cool. (laughs) So it's really, it's really fun to be a part of it and watch it grow in the way that it is. Yeah. It's, it's cool. I think it's something for the rest of my life that I'm going to be like, I was a part of it. I did that. Titanic. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and I have to tell you too, it's, it's really, um, exciting and refreshing from my perspective and you know the audience's perspective to see someone like you who clearly has lots of broadway credits and lots of like notoriety in the broadway community and everything um taking on something that may have been looked at as like a step down or a step in a different direction um because of this like quote unquote off broadway like title yeah but i kind of live for the fact because clearly it's a success story like this show yeah. is brilliant and the fact that like it yeah. doesn't need to necessarily be called a broadway show to be a success or or to attract people yeah. like you or marla or anyone you know who has had like these yeah. insane like broadway stories it's just really exciting um you know to it's also just i think we just we saw it and we're like this is yeah I mean, John Riddle left Phantom of the Opera to right. do Titanic. <laughs> right. Like, was like, I'm going to take a break from this and go do Titanic for a while. Like, because it's just so fun it's and so it's so good. great. And it's like everyone is showcased in such a great way. Like, I think it's, you know, I, it's funny. Like, some of my friends even are like, they're like, it's not like I forget how funny you are, but like, you're so funny. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, thanks. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Appreciate it. You know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But yeah, it's, it's, it's been really great. It's been really fun. And it's been fun having all my friends, you know, especially after the pandemic and stuff to like, just come time and time again and just laugh, totally. just laugh their asses off. Totally. Just fun. So yeah. has there been a show for you when you have felt the most beautiful on stage? Huh? The most beautiful on stage. Yeah. I just wondered if there was like a moment for you where yeah. you were ever like, hmm. This is it. 
I, it's funny. I just play a lot of clowns. Like, I play a lot of the weird girl. It's who I am to, <laughs> to my core is, like, just, like, the weird girl. So, like, even my boyfriend was coming to see Titanic, and I was like, I am not hot in this show. You are not going to be like, wow, what a hottie. You're going to be like, <laughs> she is deeply unwell. Okay, great. Oh, um, no, I'm kidding. But, like, you know. Um, I mean, maybe... I guess like beautiful. I, I there's so many ways to feel beautiful. I, I guess I'm translating it like physically beautiful, is like how that comes across first to me. And I I I don't know when being wheeled in as Glinda in at Shiz, wheeled in in that white like uh like what is it? what do you like white oh. uniform I guess with the with the beret. Yes. Yeah, that is fabulous feeling <laughs> it is really fabulous feeling oh. and also the um the ball gown that is i'm not that girl reprise oh when God. she's in that ball that like seafoam green ball Stunning. gown that you wear for a very like one scene mm-hmm. um but that cross and then you do i'm not that girl and then it goes like <laughs> bah, 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 and all the fog comes in Oh, like sexy. Feels sexy. Oh, yes. You're like, I'm in this gorgeous gown, Mm -hmm. and like, I'm bringing on this next, like, I don't know. (laughs) That felt like sexy physically. Um, Yes. But, And you're in that gown for for, um, the scene with Oz, right? For Use Her Sister. I love that dress. Yes. Yes. That dress is so beautiful. Gorgeous. You know what? Since since you're a a costume, a costume gal like me, um... One of the most special gifts I got in my time in Wicked was at the, when I finished tour, they, you know, they had like a ceremony. Bye, everyone. You know, whatever. And I was going to the Broadway company and our wardrobe department gave me, it was around Christmas time, gave me a glass ornament and inside of it are pieces of fabric from every single one of my costumes <gasps> as Glinda. Wow. Just like a little fabric swab or what, a swatch? Yeah. Swatch. In this glass ball, and it, I put it on the tree every year, and I'm like, it is so cool. It's that so cool to me so because, cool. like, those fabrics, those costumes, like, it's just so iconic. Yeah, iconic. 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 Truly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, so maybe that. I have a series of musical theater rapid fire questions. Ooh, okay. That I must ask you. It's and it's an exclusive okay. segment that can only be accessed on BroadwayWorld.com. So, okay, um, for listeners who are not getting their ass to go to BroadwayWorld.com, you're gonna miss out on this. But <laughs> <laughs> so, Carrie, are you ready <laughs> to yeah, answer these rapid fire questions? Okay, here we go. Yes. Sondheim or Andrew Lloyd Webber? Sondheim. Sweatpants or jeans? Ooh, jeans, actually. Fierce. You're the first person who said that. Um, <laughs> do you have a favorite musical? Uh, oh, I have three. Okay. My top three, and they, they go around, Sweeney Todd, mm-hmm. uh, Next to Normal, and Secret Garden. Oh, love. Oh, my God. You I would, love Secret Garden. You would kill that show. Oh, my God. Lily. Secret Garden. Yes. So I know, I know, I know. Um, uh, do you have a least favorite musical? Um... I don't want to be snarky. <laughs> Please, there's I There's one. No, oh my God, no, I can't. But there was one musical that I left at intermission. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. And was it Bad And Cinderella? I don't know if it was just my... St- it was not Bad Cinderella. <laughs> I have not seen Bad Cinderella. <laughs> well, count your blessings. Um, would you ever like to do a Broadway play? Yes, I would love to. Love like to. Like a Noises Off moment? Another, yeah. Another like Megan Hill totally. TV vibe? That would be so fun. Love. That would be so, 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 so fun. Are you a morning To just person? do comedy and not sing? Oh, oh my God. <laughs> exactly. I would, I would be living my best life. Oh <laughs> Smoking a pack a day before the <laughs> yeah, <show>. every day. <laughs> just martinis and cigarettes all the time. Correct. <laughs> okay. Um, are you a morning person or a night owl? I'm a night owl. Love it. So am I. Yeah. Um, what is the craziest thing a director has ever asked you to do? Oh, craziest thing a director has ever asked me to do. Oh, in high school, my director, it's a, it's, this is like a deep seated trauma. I know, I'm kidding. But um, my high school theater teacher uh, basically didn't cast me in, you're in town. And then like someone dropped out. So he cast me. 
but he made me Tiny Tina instead of Tiny Tim, but I wasn't tiny, so he put me on a wheelie platform with a burlap sack over my legs, and I would propel myself around the stage using only my arms <laughs> for the whole show. <laughs> Just all in a day's so, work. That as a choice, I was like, I don't really know. I didn't know if it was like I didn't have legs or if I didn't. I, I don't know. I don't know what the character choice was, Love. but we did it. We did it, Joe. We did yeah, it. We did it, Joe. <laughs> um, golden age or contemporary? Contemporary. Nice. She got that belt. Yeah. She said, I'm a belter. Yeah, I'm mostly contemporary. I would love to do a Golden Age, though. I still haven't. I've done, like, only contemporary musicals, which is kind of crazy. That is kind of I've wild. never done a soprano. I mean, Glinda kind of, but... Yeah. I was, like, a soprano in college. Like, that's actually where my bread and butter right. used to be. I guess now she's a screlter. Those chords. <laughs> Damage, damaged chords. Da- damaged chords. Um, are you a coffee person or a tea person? Coffee. So much coffee. So much. Yes. There's not enough. Um, <laughs> what is the hardest show you've ever done? Wicked. Fierce. Yeah. Um, who is the silliest cast member in Titanic? Oh my gosh. I mean, Constantine is, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> there is no one like him in the world, mm-hmm. and I love him so much. We have been <laughs> through many lifetimes together, I know it. He is just, yeah, my, my partner in, in idiocy. <laughs> <laughs> Beautifully said. <laughs> we are as unhinged offstage, like the backstage show and the onstage show. There's no difference. There's literally, it just carries on. Energy. And then all, everyone around is like, guys, no one, like, why are you still, <laughs> we're like, <laughs> like spinning plates. Children. Yes, yes. Um, what is your biggest onstage mishap? Oh, I've had so many. Um, <laughs> oh man, I've had so many. I, I, I for, when I forget lyrics or when I go to the white room, I, um, I don't get quieter and I don't make up other things. I just get louder and I go into a Miranda Sings voice. Like, uh, <laughs> I just lose all sense of pitch. So I'll just be like, <laughs> like that is what happens to me. And everyone is so, because I, I'm very, I don't really forget stuff a lot. I say that now, but I really don't. And so when it happens, it's super jarring to everyone involved because it's like, it is as if I'm having a stroke on the stage. Um, so probably something to do with that. I also choked in Wicked one time and also one time it didn't happen to me, but my Nessa Rose, her wheel of her wheelchair fell off. (gasps) And so then she had to walk, stand up, literally stand up (laughs) and walk off the stage. Oh no! And that was probably the most crazy, like for me experiencing it. Cause then we had to continue to say lines. Right. And I was just like, I don't know. I, I don't know how I'm going to get over this one. <laughs> I don't know oh how God, I'm going to get over this one. Did you ever have a no-fly alphaba? Did you ever have a no-fly yes. to find gravity? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Work. Yeah, yeah many times. Did you and have to no lay bubble. down? No, mo- no bubble Glinda, too. Um, I didn't have to lay down. I think she's kind of on the side, like, I hope you're happy. Okay. I mean, okay. I think it's you kind of crouch a little bit, um, <laughs> but... It's weird. It's weird when you're when you don't fly as Glinda because you just come out and you just kind of parade around. Uh huh. You just sort of like, citizen, you know, fellow Aussians, and you're just kind of like walking around. It's it's look, not as it's cute. Glinda. Yeah. It's like wow, cool. <laughs> um, do you have a dream role? Mm. I really want to be Elle Woods in Legally Blonde. Period. Poo. Period. Who? <laughs> uh, and um, and I really, I would love to like originate a role on Broadway. Oh. I think would be really neat. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and then and but like ultimate ultimate dream role like is Mama Rose. But that I feel like that's <gasps> a culmination of a career that is like I I want that. But that we got we got some time. We got some you time. got some time. But you can be prepping yeah. for it in the meantime. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I've got no, no. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Your your turn as Rose, I think, will only inform your yes. mama Rose. Ro- Rose's turn. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I should do a Rose's turn as Rose from Titanic. <laughs> oh, okay. Correct. Okay. It's Rose's turn. And um, <laughs> what is one thing that you would tell your younger self? 
Um, oh, wow. <laughs> I just start crying. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't, oh my God. I would say like, oh, that's hard. Cause I, I'm like, I, the advice I would give to like a younger person is just be kind to everyone that you meet. I but like, that. I feel like younger, but I knew I did that, you know, like that's how I was. Sure. So I think younger, I mean, it's just like, just enjoy the ride. Mm. You know, I think there was a lot of time in, you know, when I was younger in this career where it's just, you're always looking at what's next. And I guess that is part of it too. It's like, you got to be always working for what's next. It's, it's a fast moving industry and you got to keep, you got to keep working. You can't just ever just be complacent, but right. I think enjoy it. Enjoy every minute of it because it goes by fast. Totally. You know, and then you look back and you're like, whoa. Yeah. But I, I did enjoy it along the way too. I just, yeah, yeah. Everything's going to be okay. <laughs> well, one last thing. Will you also, yes. um, would you tell me about your, your upbringing? Were your parents musical? No. So, no, neither of them uh, pretty much at all. I mean... My dad is an exceptional whistler, which I I did not inherit that skill, but he is he's got incredible pitch as a whistler. Um, my dad is a doctor, and my mom is a watercolor artist, actually. Oh wow! So I kind of got both sides of you know pursue your dreams, but also make some money, like you know work hard <laughs> at it. And they were you know they were very much education was number one to my parents and I'm very grateful for that I I have had an incredible education and that is what they were like that is all we care about um but they've always supported me since day one my mom used to do props at our local theater company and um yeah they've been they've been very supportive and it's been very fun watching them watch this ride because you know they they're so involved in it and so fun for them to bring their friends and have them come see me in all these shows and things. Yeah. Um, so I yeah, love that. It, they're they're wonderful. They've always supported me, and now they have notes. You know, now they know not know so much that they'll be like, <laughs> I just have a few notes, and I'm like, oh okay, oh I see how it is. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Well, Carrie, but it's been very fun for them. Thank you so <laughs> much for being on the podcast. Thank you for having this me. Such a joy. Yeah. Um, will you tell the listeners where they can find you on socials? Yes. You can find me at Carrie St. Louis or uh, my, I mean, my website is Carrie St. Louis.com. I also have a vocal studio that's at the Carrie St. Louis studio. So yeah. And stay tuned Come find me. for thrilling updates on one Carrie St. Louis <laughs> theatrical <laughs> endeavors. <laughs> Yes. Carrie, Up thank you coming. so much. I so appreciate you. Thank being you for having You're me. You're such a delight. So fun. <laughs> you guys, that's it for another episode of Oh My Pod, You Guys. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe anywhere you listen to the pod and follow the show on Instagram at Oh My Pod, You Guys. Thanks so much for listening. Talk soon. Bye.